for some reason. You are allowed, in certain circumstances, to claim a business party, a Christmas party, an office party, as an allowable business expense, saving you tax. Is this a good thing? No, it's ridiculous. It's a dumb rule containing several smaller dumb rules within it, like fractal stupidity. But we play with the hand we're dealt, so let's play. Hi, I'm Benedict, I'm a chartered accountant. Okay, let's start with how you can save money. If something is an allowable expense, then it can be used to reduce the profit of your business, sole trader or partnership or limited company, and that reduces the amount of profit that you are taxed on, which reduces your tax bill eventually. So if I say something is allowable, I mean allowable for tax purposes, which means you're going to pay slightly less tax because of this allowable expense. For example, if a company spends £100 on a little Christmas get-together, then if it's allowable, under these rules we'll go through, it will reduce its profit by £100, which means it will reduce its tax bill by £19. And if you're the owner of the company and you're taking out profits, you'll take out slightly less profit, which means you'll pay slightly less income tax, which means you'll be slightly better off than if you paid that £100 out of your own pocket after all the taxes. If you're self-employed, the amount you can save might actually be slightly higher because you can pay higher taxes as a self-employed person than you do running a company. And if you're VAT registered, you may be able to reclaim the VAT. Maybe. That one's a bit more subtle. Again, we'll talk about it in detail in a second. Now, this is only a good business idea. If you were going to be spending the money anyway, you were planning on spending this out of your own pocket and you realised you can spend it through the business. In that case, you can save some tax. Doing something you didn't want to do just to save tax won't work because you'll still be spending money you wouldn't otherwise have spent. You'll be poorer than if you just didn't do the thing at all. But if this is something you were going to do anyway, then let's see if we can make it slightly more tax efficient for you. The rules. First, the simple main rules and then the details of some of those rules which are actually a bit weird in implementation. The rules. It has to be less than £150 per head. It has to be annual, like a Christmas party or a summer barbecue. It has to be open to all of your employees. It can't just be you and your mates, it's got to be for everybody. It can't be open to clients. That's entertaining clients, that's not allowable. And you've got to keep your receipts. If you just go and spend some money getting drunk, keep no receipts, then you're not claiming that, sorry. Now the details of some of these rules. You can invite employees, partners. So you're self-employed, you can invite your partner. You are running a company and have 10 employees, you can invite your 10 employees and their 10 partners and you can go and your one partner. I would imagine you have to invite everyone's partners. You can't just selectively invite the ones you like. You have to invite all the employees. So presumably you have to give everyone a plus one if you're giving anyone a plus one. The 150 pounds per head includes those partners. So you and one employee and a partner and a partner means 600 pounds limit, not 300 pounds limit. If you have multiple business locations, then grouping them by location is okay. A party for the Luton branch is okay. You don't have to invite everyone from Scotland and everywhere else that you work. It can just be for the location. Multiple events that add up totally to less than £150 are fine. So you have a Christmas party and you have a summer party and together they add up to less than £150 per head. That's fine. Dumb rule alert. If you spend £1 over £150 per head, then you can't claim any of it. You can't claim the first £150 having spent £151 per person. You just can't claim any of it. So be careful not to accidentally slightly overspend. Once you've got that budget, you cannot go over it by a penny. If you have two parties, one costs £100 a head, one costs £60 per head, you can't claim them both because that will be 160 and that's more than £150 per head in the year. But you can claim one of them and you can choose which one. So choose the one that's £100 because that will save you a bit more tax. And then you don't claim any of the £60 one. You don't claim the first £50 of it. You don't claim any of the £60 second party. Doesn't matter which order they're in either in the year. Claim the one that's more expensive. Another dumb rule alert for you. HMRC says annual means recurring annual. So if this is the first time you're doing it, you need to say that you're going to be doing it annually forever. So you can't say it's our 50th anniversary party for the business because that implies a one-off. You've got to say it's the first annual Christmas blowout and that's going to be your party forever so that you can claim this first year as being an annual recurring event. I don't know why but that's what they say. Now if you want to provide a party through your business that doesn't meet these rules then you're going to have to 
deal with PAYE and national insurance for the benefits provided by this party to your employees. If you have a payroll department, then while you're watching this video, go get them to sort this out for you. And if you are a small business and don't have a payroll department, then don't do this. Either follow these rules, or if you can't meet these rules and you still think it's a good idea to spend this money, pay for it out of your own pocket. Spend your personal money on having this party, which doesn't meet these rules. Because if it's a good idea, it's still a good idea, you're just not going to save the tax. And this way, paying out of your own pocket means it's not a business thing and you don't have to worry about national insurance, PAYE and a whole bunch of paperwork that you don't want to deal with. Another dumb rule alert for you, HMRC doesn't say what they mean when they say a year. So £150 per head per year, you can have two, three, four, five parties as long as totally the ones you're claiming are under £150 a head. But they don't say if year means calendar year or tax year or personal tax year, which is different to the company tax year or company accounting year. It'd be helpful if they mentioned what they meant. If I were guessing, I would say they mean the tax year. They mean company tax year that runs from the 1st of April through to the 31st of March. So if you're adding up parties to see which ones you can claim, that's probably what you want to do. But I could be wrong, if you're running a limited company, it might mean the accounting year for the limited company. So if you're talking about a Christmas party just coming up now, 2020, and then maybe something in the summer in 2021, I would call that two separate tax years and they would be in two separate calendar years and they'd probably for you be in two separate accounting years, but that depends on your accounting year. Not clear, not made clear by HMRC. VAT, another dumb rule alert for you. If Everyone who's invited to the party, and it has to be everyone, every employee has to be invited. If everyone who's invited is a director of the company, because you don't have any employees who aren't directors, or is a partner because you run a partnership and you don't have any employees of the partnership who aren't partners, or you're a sole trader and you don't have any employees, so it's just you and maybe your partner. If it's that circumstance, if everyone who's invited either owns and runs the business or is the partner of someone who owns and runs a business, then you can't claim VAT. If you have even one employee who is not the sole proprietor or a partner or a director, they're just a straight up employee, they are paid for their time and nothing else, then that makes it a party at which you can reclaim the VAT. I don't know why that's the distinction. I mean, I read HMRC's justification, but <laughs> yeah, that didn't make any sense to me. So there is a distinction between you running a small limited company where every employee is a director, maybe it's just one employee, one director, or two employees, two directors, and you running a limited company where there is an employee who is not a director. In one of those situations, you get to reclaim the VAT. And on this entertaining stuff, it might all have VAT. Similarly for self-employment. If you are self-employed and you don't employ any other people in your business, then you can't reclaim VAT. If, however, you're self-employed and have an employee, then you can invite them and reclaim the VAT because, well, I don't know why, but that's the VAT rule. So let me give you a few examples. Let's say you are self-employed and you have no employees. You're a picture framer and you do all your work yourself. And after the pubs reopen in December, fingers crossed the pubs reopen in December, you decide to go get blind drunk. You get embarrassingly drunk. You spend a hundred pounds and somehow you manage to keep all your receipts that's fine, you've had a Christmas party, your first annual Christmas party, and you are allowed to claim that as a business expense. You're just getting drunk by yourself. However, you can't reclaim any VAT because you don't have any employees who don't run the business. It's just you. Uh, maybe there's a limited company. It does IT work. There's a husband and wife team, both directors run the company. No other employees. Uh, you decide to go out to a restaurant, have a slap up meal, and then you go out partying afterwards, keep all your receipts, you spend, just under 300 pounds. You can claim the whole lot. Again, you can't claim any VAT because there's no employees who aren't directors, but you can reclaim all of that 300 pounds as a business expense. Fantastic. Now, what if you're self-employed and have an employee? Let's say you're a farrier and you've got an apprentice, an actual employee who doesn't run the business. You decide to have the first annual spring clam bake and you have a party for you, your one employee, your one employee's partner and your partner four people, £600 limit, and you spend a breath under £600. You can not only reclaim all of it as a business expense, reducing your income tax and national insurance, you can also reclaim the VAT because you have an employee who isn't running the business. 
And if everything that you spent had 20% VAT on it, and if you were above the high rate threshold, 50,000 pounds a year profit, so you were paying 42% income tax on that and insurance, then I did a little calculation and you would save 310 pounds on your 600 pound party. Well, 599 pound party, because you're not gonna go over that limit, are you? So your party that would have cost you about 600 pounds instead cost you less than 300 pounds because of the income tax and national insurance and VAT that you will get to save. That's a big discount, more than 50% discount for the right people in the right situation. So this isn't necessarily to be sniffed at. <laughs> okay, weird rule. Could you employ someone just for the week? Just pay them a few quid so they're an employee, so you can invite them to the party, so that you, the directors or partners or sole trader, the people who run the business, could reclaim the VAT on the party you'd otherwise be having, but this time you've got an employee. Don't do that, that's just silly, it probably would work, but don't do it. Well, that's my advice about Christmas parties or office parties, summer parties, annual parties for your business. It's a dumb rule, it contains a series of smaller dumb rules, but if it's going to save you some tax and that's the hand you've been dealt, then go ahead, do that. Have a party, call it your first annual something and save yourself some tax. If this video helped you, please click the like button so it helps the next person who needs to know about tax saving on Christmas parties. Uh, if you want to thank me, then invite me to the party. No, you can't invite me to the party. I'm not your employee. But if you want to thank me, then click subscribe. I'll see you next time. I do a new video every week. Let me know in the comments what you want the video to be about. And thank you for watching.